Hi, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince, also known as Mr. Telephone back in the day, and here we have a Mr. Telephone style video. So I'm back at my brother's house. He's recently gone over to Fibre, so he has Fibre coming into the property now, FTTP, Fibre to the premises. Everything's working great, but the problem we've got is his old landline phones no longer work. The only phone that works is the digital phone here, the deck phone that came with it. So you can hear now, we have dial tone but there's only one handset. Yes, you can buy additional handsets, that's not a problem, and most people would be happy just using them. But what happens if you want to use your old phones? What happens if you've got an old Bell, an antique phone that you want to use? Is it possible to connect them up to the VoIP network? Because in a few years' time, there won't be any such thing as your copper lines coming into the house anymore. They're wanting to go over to VoIP. So will it work connecting your old phones up? That's what we're hopefully going to find out in this video. Let me just show you the phones not working. Living room, not working. Kitchen, not working. And the bedroom, not working. So just to clarify, when I say that you no longer have copper coming into your house, you might well have copper coming into your house, but your phone sockets around the house will be dead because it's going over to voice over IP, meaning that the telephone line is gonna be coming from the router, no longer the phone sockets around your house. So we're going to disconnect this router, aka router if you're not from the UK, and bring it down for a more convenient surface and I can show you the connections at the back and hopefully what we're going to try and do. Now I know some people are going to think it's madness because of course these do work and yes, this is the future, but there's something nice about using one of the old fashioned phones and I don't think anybody can argue with that. Look at this trim phone, who remembers that? Also even if you forget about the aesthetics. You might well have a bell, you might own a garage or something, in which case then you need an external bell so you can hear the phone ringing. Will it work on VoIP? Well, we'll test that at the very, very end because I don't know. Will there be an issue with what's known as the REN, the ringing equivalent number? Not too sure, on BT lines it used to be four. What is it on a VoIP line? I suppose it doesn't exist because it's not designed for it, but let's connect it up and see what we get. Now, just to be clear, you see here no link to hub because it's just booting itself up. If there's a power cut, none of your phones are going to work, even if they're landline phones, they're still not going to work because beforehand, when it wasn't on VoIP, they would get their power from the exchange. Now, they're working from your router. So just bear that in mind that in an emergency situation, in a power cut, your phones still aren't going to work. Okay, so the router's now booted up. What we want to see is whether an old-fashioned phone will work plugged straight into here, not just for dial tone, but for ringing as well, because more modern phones within, let's say, the last 20 years will work on just two wires. And if you're watching this in other parts of the world apart from the UK, most of your phones will just ring on two wires. In the UK, we've got it slightly differently. It takes its ringer from the master socket, the capacitor in the master socket. So we want to see whether a phone will ring when it's plugged directly into here. Will this also generate the ringing, which will work on an old phone? So I'm just going to plug it straight in now. Now, this is a BT one because we're in the UK. In other parts of the world, it will be an RJ11, a square wear type plug like that there. So let's plug the phone straight in and then we'll ring it and also we'll check for dial tone. So I'm just going to check for dial tone to begin with. Yeah and we've got dial tone. I'm not sure whether you're going to hear that. Hopefully you should do. Now let's ring and see if it rings. Fantastic. So that's the deck phone ringing here. But that old mechanical bell, you can hear ringing in that phone there. So, so far, that's good news because that means this is actually working as a master socket. I thought we might have to connect up a master socket as the first point from here to make the phones ring. But no, they're ringing straight from here, which is really good news. Now, talking about old phones, a lot of you are going to wonder, does pulse styling work? I think we know the answer is going to be no, but let's just double check. There we go. You can hear it ringing there. Forget about the deck phone over here. But yet, yeah, if we were to dial out, it's not going to work. So, if I was to dial the operator, it's been so long since I've done this. All that's going to happen is, it's going to return dial tone. There we go, dial tone's back. So unfortunately, 
pulse styling is not going to work, which we kind of already knew. Now, obviously, on a phone from the 1950s, you're only going to have the option to do pulse styling. But on more modern phones, but still old phones, like 30 years old, you can see here we have LD, loop disconnect. That would be pulse styling. So if it's not working, see if you've got a switch and you can just pop it over to the tone one. In this instance here is M. FT, not the earth dialing one, MFT. And then this one will work on your VoIP system. Okay, so now let's try to work out a little bit of the theory behind it. So at this moment in time, this is for a UK system. This is a telephone pole outside. Obviously your house can be fed underground. It makes no difference. There's just two wires coming into your property. Most of this will apply worldwide as well. Apart from in the UK, on the extension sockets, we have to have three wires. You see three lines go into each of them because they take their ringer from the capacitor in the master socket. In other parts of the world, it will be two wires in from the street, two wires to each extension socket. So you don't need to worry about the ringer wire. It's made slightly harder in the UK. So we've got our MS, our master socket. We've got an extension socket, extension socket, extension, extension. These are just normal phone sockets here. They might be a two stroke 3A, a three stroke 3A. It makes no difference. So now what we want to do is obviously beforehand we had the phone signal coming down here. Now we've got the phone signal coming from our router. So we have to intercept these somewhere. Now what some people will think is, yeah, no bother. Just get a BT mail plug, plug it into here and plug it into the master socket there. Yes, that will then liven up these points here and this with dial tone, but you're also going to have that dial tone going right the way to the telegraph pole or underground and then all the way back three miles to the telephone exchange. Do not do that. It could cause problems because further down the line here, these wires might get disconnected. They might short together. It might knock out your phone line. Don't do that. What we want to do is we want to leave the master socket intact because that's owned by your service provider. So we want to leave the wires in here from the pole or underground intact. We only want to work on the customer's wires which are owned by yourself inside the property. So in this instance here, what we would have to do is, if we were to intercept the lines here, it would liven up this one, this one, and this one. It's not going to liven up this one. So what we could do is we could put a little junction box here, and then we could move the wires here into here. So we could divert the three wires into here and we could divert the three wires into here. That will then leave this intact, but then we will now have the junction box feeding these ones here. We would then get a cable from the VoIP router into here. Yeah, in fact, three wires from here. Yeah, and then, uh, so these are the wires. Obviously you've got the one cable, you're using three wires in the one cable. Then you see, now we've left this intact and now we have the VoIP router connecting up all these points here. Now, what happens if you've got a phone plugged into your master socket? In which case then, what you would do is you wouldn't put a junction box here, you would put another socket here. So you would get your another unbranded socket here and you would do the same, but it's gonna have an outlet on the front that you can plug your phone into. So that is, the theory behind it. Now, before we do the install, how do we get the cable from the VoIP router into either the socket or the junction box? Well, we know at the back of the router, we've got a BT plug. In other parts of the world, it'd be an RJ11 plug, but you're still gonna have the same problem. Yes, of course, you can crimp on your own plug, but it's gonna be a lot easier just to use something that's already made. So if you were to get an extension lead like this, but make sure it's an extension lead and not an old modem cable or a phone lead for the bottom of your phone. Because if you look at this one here, there's only two wires connected on this one, but yet we have four wires connected on here. We're gonna need to have at least three wires, aren't we, to get the ringing signal in the UK to the other parts of the circuit. So what we're gonna do is use one of these and I've already stripped one back here. You now need to know because the colors are often different depending on the cable and the age of the cable. So if you get yourself a socket, so this is an extension cable here, yeah? If you get a socket and just plug the plug into there, we can now use a continuity tester and the ones that we're interested in is number five, number two and three. So two and five make it work and three makes it ring. So once we get our meter here, all we have to do is probe number two and see where it comes up here. And not there, not there, red. So now mark down on a bit of paper that two is red and I know that three is gonna be blue. There we go. And number five over here, white. 
So mark that down on the paper, but make sure you check it yourself because your color code will be different. So now we know that when we plug this into the Voip router and we connect this up into the socket using the correct colors that we've just worked out, two, five, and number three, that we're now gonna liven up the rest of the system. Now, unfortunately with these, they're stranded cables, so they don't work well with IDC connections here. So these stranded ones will have to go into screw terminals. You can use something like this, which is nice. The screw terminals connect to the IDC, so one goes to one, two to two, three to three, etc. So we can do the solid core cable from all the existing wiring into here, and then we can use the stranded wire into the screw terminals. We can also, on this part here, just go straight over to screw terminals because it is just for voice, and voice is really reliable. Screw terminals will do it no harm at all. So this is the cupboard here and this is the existing master socket. Now, if you have a look at the bottom there, we can see that there's three cables coming into it. So one's gonna be the feed and then we're gonna have two extension cables. As well as that, we have a junction box up there with four cables in it. So that's gonna be maxed out in that junction box. So we can't do anything there because the little IDC terminals in there will only accept two wires in each terminal. So that's gonna be maxed out in that one. So what we're gonna have to do is put a little junction box next to this one here, pull out two of the cables from underneath it and put them into the junction box. Then get a cable from the junction box feeding the router and that way then it will leave this intact so we haven't touched BT's property and then we will have our own network this time being fed from here via the junction box two wires then coming out of that which will then link up to this and link up everything else in the house and we will be good to go. Unplug the faceplate here and we're left with this one here. This is a new Star Master socket, so it will look slightly different to a lot of the other sockets in the country. But if you have a look, you can see the incoming BT1 is here. So this wire here is the incoming one. We're gonna leave that alone. We've actually got a spare cable here. This is not being used, you can see, it's just there as a spare, so we can leave that. And then the extensions are wired to this front little plate here. And it's using the standard color code, which is white, blue to five, blue to two, and the ringer is orange in the middle there. Obviously make a note of your one because your colors might well be different or they might be using older color codes. So all we have to do is flip this up here and then that will allow us to pull the wires out. And these are gonna be the wires that's feeding the rest of the house. So we can pull that out completely and we can actually get the cable and we can push it through the bottom of it there. There we go, so we've now pulled out the extension cable and we're just gonna pop that into there like so. Now in this instance here, it is very easy because just it's just the one cable, everything is then fed from this one cable. It must then go up to uh, this point here and then star wire off in different directions. But you get the theory behind it anyway. We're coming to where the line comes into the property and all we're doing is we're changing where the incoming line's from. So instead of the incoming lines coming from here, then going onto here via there, we're having it coming from here, connecting to here. That's all we're doing. Okay, just to show you before we put the lid on, also we wanna measure for voltage as well, see what voltage is coming down this Foyt line. But now you can see that the IDC once has the old existing telephone wire, blue to two, orange to three, and I'm gonna punch this one in now in a second. And there we have the white of the, of the new flexible cable from the Voigt router to number five there. I know it looks like it says six, but it's, uh, it's marked there five below it, so it's four, five, six. And we've got uh, red to two and blue to three as we measured earlier. So I'm gonna push this into, leave a little bit of slack, push that into number five there, and we're gonna use an IDC tool, which is one of these. Now, the cable needs to go in from this side and we're cutting this side here. So the blade of the IDC needs to go in here. I am doing this one-handed, so apologies. You probably can't see anything, hold on. And we'll just shove it down and it will cut the wire at the same time. So, there we go, did it cut the wire? No, I'm gonna have to do it two-handed. The, uh, the blade is a little bit, uh, bit, bit blunt on these. Now, 
there we go right so now let's get a multimeter and let's go across two and five because that's where the dial tone's coming from, two and five. And let's see what volts DC we have on it, because a normal telephone line in the UK is 50 volts DC. And make sure when you're plugging in the router, it's the last thing you do. So we've done all the wiring now. We're gonna put the lid on and stuff, and then this will be the last thing that we will do. And then hopefully that will liven up the phones in the house. Right, so across the two and the five, look, 48 volts. So it is actually the same as a normal UK telephone line which is interesting to know. Okay, so quite happy with the end result. So you can see the cable coming out of here. It just loops around there, cable tied to here, goes into this little junction box, and then this connects up the rest of the cable in, in the house, and we've left that intact. So now, that's a really useful junction box. When I used to sell stuff like this, that never sold that well, but you can see in this instance, it's really useful. So that's called a BT84A. But let's say now if you didn't have an IDC tool, then what you could use is you could use one of these instead, just a screw terminal version. And this is called a BT77B, not A, B for the screw terminals. Now we just have to test to see if the phones work and ring. Right, great news. I tried this phone here for incoming, outgoing, and it's working just fine and ringing fine as well. So if you have a listen on the monitor, you can hear dial tone there and dial tone is broken there. So I'm just gonna get my brother to ring in on this one. You hear it ring in there? And it answers. So now let's just check the other phones. And now we're in the living room and you can hear that one ringing and it answers. And now in the bedroom, you can hear that the monitor's working there. And if we ring in, there we go and let's answer. There we go. That's just feedback because the phone's near it. Right, so great news, it's all working. And then uh, all we have to now do is finish up. Let's try to get that old extension bell working. Right, while my brother's just connecting up that bell, just checking the deck phone here, and it's still working just fine. And if you are having problems with the ringing off the phones, because maybe you've got too many connected, just turn the ringer off on some of them. Because if you've got one phone in one room and another phone in another room, you might be able to hear the other phone anyway. So if you find that the ring is incorrect, it sounds weak, it's not going through properly, turn the ringer off on some of the phones and then hopefully that will mean you can still hear the other phones ring, but you can still use the phone with the ringer off, you just won't hear it ring. Okay, so it's just been thrown in there just for the time being, just on three and five. You can see the orange wire and the white blue wire. That's how you wire up a bell. And yeah, it's working. Not 100% sure if it's as loud as if it was on a normal landline, but it's still pretty loud. So let's give it a ring now. There we go, so a bell works as well. So there we have it, quite a successful outcome. Now again, there's nothing wrong with a deck phone, it's working really, really nice, but some people do prefer using the older phones. So in this instance here, we had four pieces of equipment connected, in, well, not including deck phone, five including that. So four other phones connected, one of them being a bell, and they still appear to work fine. We think the dial tone's a little bit lower than you would have on a normal BT line, but it sounds fine when you're actually making a call. So one thing we're not, or two things we're not sure about is if you have an alarm-based system that dials out down the telephone line if the alarm goes off, we're not sure whether that would work or not because we haven't got an alarm. And lastly, we don't know if you have too many things connected. Could it cause long-term problems to the actual router itself? Maybe in the future, REN boosters might make a comeback because they're very hard to get now. But possibly, if you've got a big house with lots of phones, a REN booster could really come in useful in this situation here when using a VoIP line. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a lot of fun to make and hopefully it will be informative to people watching it. Until until the next time, take care.